This is a little update to my AGIC circuit marker video. Um, I kept noting in that video that there was high resistance using the silver ink pen or marker, whatever the hell it's called. And uh, well, when you get high resistance in a circuit, of course, that limits the amount of amperage that that circuit can pass without overheating and blowing up. This has a very thin veneer of this silver marker ink on it. And so its current handling capacity clearly isn't going to be high. So it's probably gonna come as no surprise what I have set up here. I took a standard computer power cable, split it in half, and soldered one end of it onto each end of this strip of photo paper with ink lines drawn on it. And uh, of course this will create a circuit path and the resistance between these two ends on the paper is gonna be about 95 ohms, which at the current voltage in my house of around 120-ish, should mean that this is dissipating about 160 watts of heat. So uh, we can kind of guess what's gonna happen. I have here a lamp, which is my, from my old bedroom when I was a kid. Uh, that's why it's so dusty and nasty. It's probably as old as I am. And it has a 40 watt incandescent bulb in it. And right now it's running off of uh, straight power from the house. So needless to say, this is the business end of this circuit. You can see I have it taped down just so it doesn't rip these solder joints off, but uh, this is all the same cord. And uh, in this overly litigious world, I'm going to point out that you should not try this at home because it's gonna have live line voltage exposed right in the middle of a table and probably start a small fire. So I'm gonna turn this, uh, let's see, is that in shot? I got a power strip here, I'm gonna turn the switch off and now the lamp is plugged into the end of this cord and I'm going to plug the other end of the cord into the power strip and uh, three, two, one. Oh, well that was rather disappointing. I'm going to play it back in slow motion but uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see exactly what happened but I saw a small spark and the switch is definitely off. You know what? Turning the switch off, never enough. Always unplug something before you mess with it if it's at uh, line voltage or high voltage. Uh, I saw a little spark right here. So I'm assuming it just blew that solder pad. I was kind of hoping this whole thing would overheat and burst into flames. But uh, yeah, I got my trusty multimeter right here and I'm gonna guess that I've lost continuity between this end and this end. And I'm sorry, this is kind of up in the air and all bent like that. That's because this solder joint got messed up as I was doing it after I taped everything down. And so uh, this was kind of the best I could do. Yeah, there's no continuity there, but there's probably, yep, there's continuity there. I'm getting 75 ohms-ish. And there's continuity up till there. I measured 95 before. The ink still, still might've been a little bit wet. It's definitely dry by now. So maybe that's why, but you can see lost continuity there and we still have continuity there at about 92 ohms, it looks like. So, uh, yeah, kind of disappointing that it didn't, uh, didn't blow up. And the final thing I want to do, just again for fun, is take my marker pen, and this is the Canon paper now. Like I said, the Canon paper works pretty well. I didn't have a problem with it, so I'm going to create a little path like that. Turn on my bench top power supply, which actually still has the LED connected to it. Take that off. And uh, I'm gonna turn the voltage down to zero volts and connect it right across this. And actually before I apply power, just out of curiosity, let's see what kind of resistance we're getting between those. Now, I don't know if this uh, will have some resistance itself, so let me take that out of circuit. And that's showing 16 ohm. Call it 16 ohm, 16.1 is close enough. If I move the probes slightly closer together, or slightly farther apart, it'll change. So for the purposes of calculating power dissipation, we'll just call it 16 ohms. Now I'm just gonna crank the voltage up to 30 volts is the maximum of this power supply. I'm just gonna twist the knob and we'll see what blows up. Oh, that melted pretty good. I hope you saw the puff of smoke that came off of there. 
And um, actually, I didn't even look at the current reading, so I don't know how much current that passed. But of course, you could calculate it. And um, it's hard to tell on camera, but the area behind it is now raised. Between here and here, there's actually a nice bump on the back where the paper sort of surface, the paper sort of melted. And now switching the meter back to continuity. Let's see if we have any. Nope, no continuity. So, oh, a little bit there. 90 ohms. All right, so, but not continuity where the clips were on. So it, it does blow out the tracks when you pass too much current through it. And it blows it out in such a way that you can't really see that it's blown out. So this could be very hard to debug if you have a something set up on here, a complex circuit, and you're not getting continuity somewhere, something's not lighting up, or a motor's not running, what have you. It's very hard to troubleshoot because if the track isn't completely fried like this and isn't even isn't raised, um, it might still break the circuit and you, you can't visually tell where that is. You know, ordinarily on a PCB, if a track blows, you'll usually see it, it'll be quite obvious because it requires a decent amount of current to fry the track. Here, not so much. And so um, the track looks pretty nice, but doesn't have continuity. And it broke right near the, the clips, just like it broke near the solder joints with this little experiment. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that little update. I'm Scott. Thanks for watching.